Wait, who's this Shimon dude? I've never seen, I've never heard of this dude. This dude is top 10? How have I never heard of this dude? Cause you live under a rock. Shimon, who is this guy and where did he come from? He has risen through the rankings so fast that if you aren't consistently active, you might not have heard about him. Okay, so who is he? Well, Shimon is a player from Malaysia, but he's not just any player. He is number one in the country. I can pretty much guarantee that if you are aware of him, you know him as a speed player, but it wasn't always like this. Today, I will tell the story about Shimon's rise in Osu and just exactly how he got where he is. But in order to get there, we should start from the beginning. The year is 2015. PewDiePie makes a video about Osu. This video was released in October, and it was the first time Shimon had ever heard of Osu. While it looked interesting enough, he didn't really get into it. A month later in November, one of Osu's biggest events would happen. Cookie Z was unbanned. He went live on Twitch and streamed Osu for a few hours, amassing thousands of viewers. His return was such a huge deal that one way or another, Cookie Z videos found their way into Shimon's YouTube Recommended. It was during this time that he realized Osu was a pretty intense game, and it seemed like fun, so he went ahead and registered his account on December 5th, 2015. He started just like every new player, played the tutorial, played My Love, and downloaded some of his favorite anime songs to play. After playing for some time in late 2016, he was restricted for cheating. If you are unaware of what a restriction is, let me explain it. A restriction is a timeout from the community forced upon accounts that exhibit abnormal, suspicious, or rule-breaking behavior. When an account is restricted, it is unable to interact with the community until the restriction is lifted. While a restricted player can continue playing the game, their profile will be invisible to others. To put it simply, being restricted is nearly the same thing as being banned, with restricted players losing access to many of Osu's features. The main difference between a restriction and a ban, however, is that a restriction can be appealed. If they choose to send an appeal later, they could have the decision reversed. Alright, now that you understand what a restriction is, why the heck did Shimon get restricted? Well, like I said, he was restricted for cheating, which is a breach of the Osu rules. He wasn't setting the scores he wanted to, so like many players before him, he resorted to alternative methods. He got caught, and his account was swiftly restricted by the Osu staff. He did continue to play throughout his time being restricted, which led to him eventually sending an appeal and becoming unrestricted around mid-2017. From this point on, Shimon just played mainly for fun. So fast forward through 2017 and 2018, we now arrive at 2019. Throughout his time playing for fun, he was constantly improving, so he made the decision to start taking Osu seriously. Osu was fun again, and it didn't take long for Shimon to get back to the grind. In February 2019, he got his first 300 PP play on the Kroitis Kimi no Boken map. Alright, that's a common farm map, not too impressive. What is impressive though is just 3 months later in May he set his first 400 PP score. Okay, it's Chika Chika DT so it may not really be that impressive. What is impressive though is the score he set a month later. He FC'd best friends with DT, not the short one but the long one. And this was actually his second 400 PP play. Okay, this is definitely more impressive than Chika Chika, but looking at his scores around this time, they're pretty much all farm maps. His skill set at this time is quite obvious just by looking at the maps he played. At this point in time, he was alternating and playing almost nothing but aim maps, gaining ranks at a pretty consistent rate throughout the entire year of 2019. He climbed all the way up to around 1,900. While it seems like everything was going great for him, there was trouble brewing behind the scenes, which you would never tell by looking at his plays and rankings. But before we get to that, I want to give a visual representation of what his growth looks like so far up to this point. This is his top plays history chart. You can see the timeline so far. The years and months are labeled at the bottom and the PP values for these plays will pop up as I move the mouse. As you can see, the left side of the chart shows a few plays in 2016, then there's a huge gap where he was restricted, lasting until around September 2017. As I go over some of the plays on the chart, you can see that most of them are without a doubt farm maps, mainly designed to be short, 
easily repeatable and give lots of performance points. Just looking at these scores, they aren't exceptional or groundbreaking in any kind of way. Now, having said that, I want to look at a chart of his rank and PP over time. But before that, you absolutely must watch this. <laughs> And this one starts in 2018, the year after Chimon was unrestricted. In February, he is around rank 25,000 in the world. Following the line, we can see almost exactly a year later, he made it just above rank 12,000. This rate of improvement isn't all that crazy. The next segment is what's crazy. Just seven months after this, he was in the top 2,000. Let me repeat that. After seven months, Shimon went from rank 12,000 to 1,600. A quick glance at the blue line representing total PP will show the amount of improvement in these months. As you can see, this segment is much steeper than any before it. Okay, back to what I said before. If 2019 was such a great year for him, what did I mean when I said that trouble was brewing? Well, unfortunately, around this time, he started experiencing pain when he would play. I wish I could say that this is uncommon, but it's really not. A lot of people that get into Osu end up setting bad habits which have negative effects. This can range from things like tapping their keyboard too hard, playing hunched over, gripping their pin too tight, and many other things. Back to Shimon. What kind of pain was he experiencing? He was feeling shooting pains in his tapping hand pretty much every time he played. At this point in time, he was holding his wrists in the air when tapping. See, when you have your wrists supported on a desk, it is much easier to maintain good form and prevent injuries. However, when you hold your hand in the air, there is no support for your wrist, which puts a lot more strain on it. It was due to this pain that he contemplated quitting Osu at times. As 2020 approached, Shimon's play count started dropping lower and lower. The pain was becoming too much to handle, to the point where he felt miserable as his wrist and fingers hurt like crazy. He described this period as his worst experience with Osu. He was so passionate about the game, but he was putting himself through so much pain in order to keep playing. So at this point in his story, it sounds uncertain whether he will continue playing or not. Well, if it wasn't for his pure enjoyment of the game, his story might have very well ended here. Determined to continue having fun, he set out to fix his bad habits. It took the entire first half of the year to fix this issue of pain. While he was focused on his tapping, he decided that it was time to step it up. No longer did he want to be an aim one trick. He wanted to be just like the players he looked up to. Players like Zeltel and Arison. Now it is quite the drastic change to go from jump maps to speed. But with that in mind, he set out to do just that. Okay, cool. Exactly how does one go about it though? Sure, people say all the time to just play more and you'll get better. While that certainly is true, it's not enough to become a speed player. This would take a lot of dedication and Shimon was more than happy to take the leap. The first thing he did was stop full alternating. He would instead work on single tapping jumps with just one finger instead of both. He found that single tapping jumps was much more comfortable for him than alternating. This also helped him find the perfect position for his wrist, also helping to eliminate some of the pain he was feeling before. After making this change, he found that he could play for much longer periods of time without feeling pain or fatigue. This allowed him to put in more hours of practice, which in turn made him a better player. What kind of stuff was he practicing though? What was his plan to get better at speed? Well, he decided to go down the path of extreme conditioning. Extreme conditioning, let's break this down. The basis of conditioning is doing something over and over again to get desired results. This word is very common among physical fitness as conditioning is doing the same exercises over and over to build up the body strength, stamina, and overall fitness. The extreme part may feel a bit over the top, but in this case, it's really not. Extreme conditioning is similar to conditioning, doing exercises over and over, but the difference is that extreme conditioning is much, much more intense and it has a much higher level of commitment. This usually consists of pushing oneself as hard as possible to the max where you feel like you have to stop, then taking a short break and doing it again. By repeating these intensive tasks over and over, you build whatever it is you're aiming for fairly quickly, 
as long as you maintain these exercises. In the case of Shimon, he decided to speed up maps and push himself as hard as he could. He used the program that let him change the speed of beat maps, and he mainly targeted high BPM maps with plenty of bursts and streams. He would play these to his absolute hardest, making sure not to double tap, but instead stream properly. He kept pushing himself as hard as he could, which does lead to pain, but this is not the same kind of pain that he was feeling before when playing normally. This is the kind of pain that pushes a person to be better. You know what they say, no pain, no gain. After these sessions of playing at his maximum, he would oftentimes go to something that was quite a bit easier than whatever speed he had been playing at. An example of this would be something like Speed of Link, which is around 260 BPM, and then going to a song like Freedom Dive that is 220. The difference in the speed required is immediately noticeable, almost feeling like a break from the much faster song. He began to see results fairly quickly, and about halfway through the year, he started climbing the ranks again. Speed players usually get a reputation of being fast and having pretty good stamina but lacking in the aim department. Shimon found it extremely crucial that his aim did not depreciate and worked on improving it throughout this whole time. I really don't understand how this man had enough time in a day to work on both skills especially when training speed takes a lot of dedication. To prove this point, in September, he played the popular farm map. He SS'd this play and got a score worth 625 pp. As you can see by the gameplay, this map is full of jumps and requires very good aim. Throughout the rest of 2020, he continued training his speed and aim, mainly climbing the ranks by setting scores on aim maps. September of 2020 was when Shimon achieved the sought-after title of three digits. Being a three digit means that he made it to the top 1,000 ranked players. This is extremely difficult to achieve and it is a huge accomplishment. Upon reaching this, he felt even more motivated to keep improving. By the end of 2020, Shimon was around rank 750 globally. While this is an impressive achievement, it is important to mention that at this time, Shimon was starting to experience pain in his aim hand. After everything he had been through with the other hand, this was shaping up to be devastating. Before the new year rolled around, he got some new gear. This would include a tablet, to be specific, the Wacom CTL472, and a new keyboard with a higher polling rate. He got this tablet at the perfect time. The pin for his previous tablet was too big for his grip, which caused the pain and discomfort. Luckily for him, as soon as he started playing with the Wacom pin, all his pain went away. With this, he was now ready to put his speed to the test. Going into 2021, Shimon was really feeling himself. At this point, he has been working on speed and stamina for half a year, but he doesn't have any speed scores yet. All of his top plays are typical farm maps. Just two months into the new year, with a new tablet and new keyboard, he would set the first of many scores to come. Plasma Gun, a song known for being short, only 38 seconds with double time. This song is also known for its bursts, which are a brisk 270 BPM. Although very short, this map is an excellent display of good finger control for both tapping as well as aiming. Another score he would set shortly after that is My Narco with DT. This map is just over a minute long, but it is filled with 272 BPM bursts. And do not let the length of this map fool you either. While it is short, it is 8.8 .8 stars, which is just crazy high. This marks his first 700 PP play, and quite honestly, this is just the beginning of Shimon's anime arc. Before talking about more of his plays, I want to put into perspective and visualize his rank throughout the year. Shimon starts 2021 around rank 750. By the end of January, he has actually gone down some ranks to 780. Almost exactly a month later, in late February, he was rank 300. He managed to gain roughly 1,600 PP and over 450 ranks in a single month. Competition at the top is fierce, so this speaks volumes about how much effort he put in. Another month goes by, and now it's March. He has gained about 700 more PP, and he is now in the top 200. As I mentioned earlier, these three months account for some of the fastest improvement he had. He kept playing and improving, which led to him eventually reaching the top 100. If I go back to the chart that shows his top plays over time, you can see the insane number of plays he has set in 2021. He has been around the block and done it all pretty much. He has scores on classic maps now, such as Sunglow, Wizard's Tower, Make a Move, Anime Band, Last Goodbye, and so many others. 
Okay, the maps I just listed are known farm maps for top players, but that does not make them any less impressive. And these scores helped him reach where he is today. He continued like this until something happened in June. Well, not just one thing, but two things happened. He got his first 800 PP play. This was set on Akatsuki Zukuyo with double time, a map that is 8.5 stars and it is nearly 3 minutes long. This score is the perfect representation of Shimon as a player. It is full of 270 BPM bursts, has lots of jumps, and its length is nothing to joke about. To this day, less than 30 players have a full combo with DT on this. The second major thing that happened this month, Shimon had finally achieved two digits. He was now in the top 100. This is an incredible achievement that not many people can say they've done. Shimon's passion for this game and admiration for other top players continued motivating him. Seeing these results from all the work he had put in, Shimon kept going. He snowballed, setting score after score. This video would be over an hour if I named each of them, so I won't. What I will do, however, is zoom in on this chart and show you just how ridiculous this is. As you can see, there are easily 100 plus scores in this area. I really can't express how crazy this is. Like I said before, most speed players are stereotyped as having bad aim, but Shimon kept proving his skill over and over again. Many of the maps you are seeing right now are very aim intense and require a lot of control. There is also an increased amount of notable speed maps in here, such as Sidetrack Day, Fire Jail, Zevil, Moe Kai, as well as some foreground eclipse songs. His skill set covers everything fast at this point. Whether it's bursts, streams, or raw aim, he can do it. In November, he reached the top 20. This is it. He's at the home stretch. Throughout this month and the entire month of December, he made it so close, reaching a peak of rank 11. Going into the new year of 2022, Shimon has spent the last two months knocking at the door of the top 10 players. He is eager to make it in. January passes, still not in. February passes, he's still sitting outside the top 10. March passes, he has gained nearly 2,000 PP and he still is not in the top 10. At this point, Shimon has set 6 plays over 900 PP, 2 plays over 1,000, and he still isn't in the top 10. Then comes April. April 7th. This is the day that changed everything for Shimon. Okay, well, not really. He finally made it into the top 10 though. At this point, he knew he was pretty good, and he was not showing any signs of slowing down. He has pretty much been in the top 10 since then, with this last month of July being one of his most prominent. He's gone from entering the top 10 to rank number 6, and he wants to continue climbing at least the top 3. I believe he can do it, as he has one of the best mindsets and grind sets for improving. While we are now caught up to current day, I want to talk about Shimon's most impressive scores. I've been playing some of his replays in the background throughout the video, but these scores deserve some talking time. Shimon's current top play is Dark Flight Dreamer with DT, worth 1070 PP. This map is 284 BPM and 9.1 stars. This play is very impressive and the only DTFC on this map. The next score is Super Nuko World FC, worth 931 PP. This is 285 BPM and 8.7 stars, as well as being the only FC on this map with double time. The next score is World's End with DT. Of course, he is the only FC on this map with the play being worth 972 PP. Now, Shimon is quite known for his chokes. He has way too many to discuss, but these are some of the most impressive ones. This first one is on Marianne where he missed 5 times. Which by the way, these misses were rather unfortunate as they were pretty easy parts. Without these misses, an FC on this play would have been worth 1200 PP. The song is 287 BPM and the map is 9.5 stars. So this play is extremely slept on. A very sad choke is his extremely high accuracy play on Santa-san. This map is 9.1 stars and 285 BPM. He got an extremely unfortunate one miss on a slider at the end of a burst. That single miss would cause his play only to be 987 PP. And without that miss, it would have been over 1100. 
pretty unfortunate. But his play on storytellers is even more unfortunate. You know the drill by now. High BPM, high star rating. He got three misses. And without them, this play would have been over 1200. This score in particular was set in February, at the beginning of the year, when he was still struggling to get into the top 10. This is like a never-ending tragedy that keeps happening over and over. He choked an incredibly difficult map by the name There Are No Angels Here, getting three misses. Again, choking another 1000 PP play. He has another choke on this Chinese map I'm not even going to try to pronounce. He missed right at the end for this map, missing out on another 1000 PP play. This is it for the plays that he has pinned, but I'm going to show you what it looks like scrolling down his user page. You can see all of the A ranks where he has very few misses. You may notice that most of these songs are well known stream maps. Like I said, he has pushed extremely hard to replace all of those old farm maps with these plays, and he's doing a great job. Shimon is one of the most dedicated and hardworking gamers out there, and his success in Osu is a testament to that. He has come a long way from where he started, and there's no doubt that he'll continue to improve and achieve great things in the future. This story really goes to show that with hard work and dedication, you can achieve almost whatever you want, whether that's top 10 in Osu, surpassing those you look up to, or just wanting to be remembered. You can do it. I would usually put an interview section in here, but for this video, I've just decided to leave it as a text file. If you'd like to read the interview in its full form, you can find a link to it in the description. It is very insightful into Shimon's training and his mindset throughout his time playing. If you made it all the way to the end, thank you for watching, and I hope you have a good one.